Free Channel. Men throughout the world learned to look on the brutal face of communism. Berlin, powder keg of Europe, saw a mass demonstration of indoctrinated young Germans. For the first time in their history, Americans faced an enemy whose ideas, they believed, were as dangerous as its military power. And across the world in Japan, Communism was public enemy number one. But far more sinister to Americans was home front communism. Union Square in New York was the backdrop for these scenes of red violence. From their ranks will come the saboteurs, spies, and subversives should World War III be forced upon America. We know that communism is an organized threat to our way of life. But how far do you feel that we should go, we here in America, in legislating against it? Well, I think it should be curbed somewhat. Um, I don't know that it should be outlawed completely. I think when it becomes a threat to our democratic uh, way of living here in the United States, that something should definitely be done about it. Well, I think we should fight communism in every way possible. Uh, we can't force it underground, as has been said, any more than it already has. Tales of invasion by alien creatures, a new genre of science fiction movie, played to America's anxieties about its vulnerability to attack from within. They're like huge seed pods. This must be the way that putty in my closet was formed. Miles, where did they come from? I don't know. If they are seeds or seed pods, they must grow someplace on a plant, probably. The invasion of the body snatchers really struck at destroyed a way of communicating the notion that people were the same, they looked the same, but they were different. And, you know, that was a real sense. You, you understood. It was more about brainwashing. It was, all, it was more about the notion that, that was, was people were fed at that time, that communism was a, a, a drug that sort of took you over and that made you into something else. Suddenly, while you're asleep, they'll absorb your minds, your memories, and you're reborn into an untroubled world. Where everyone's the same? Exactly. What a world. There'd been communist menaces, so-called red scares, before the war. There was, there was one after World War I. Uh, but this time, the, the communist menace was supported by this huge military power, the Soviet Union. Uh, and of course, we gave the Soviets far more credit than they deserved as far as their weaponry and their reach was concerned. But it, it, it gave us a kind of a Satan figure. And uh, people were very comfortable in the 50s. Everybody wanted to keep what he had. And the communists represented someone who wanted to take that away from you. What happens when an aggressor seizes power in a democratic country? The Army shows you as part of Exercise Longhorn at Lampasas, Texas. It was impossible to believe, if one looked at it seriously, that the Russians were all that big, all that powerful, that they could scare us all that much that we had to go into this fit of paranoia. We didn't see us as the big bad wolf or the big good wolf. We saw ourselves as the little guy, although we were the biggest, roughest, toughest country in the world. And, um, and we saw ourselves as essentially defenseless. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. If a person consistently reads and advocates... Since most Americans had no idea what a communist was, government propaganda films provided helpful hints. More difficult to detect are the undercover workers of communism. They can be discovered only through sharp vigilance over a long period of time. I remember on the job, I had lots of... Uh, low-level jobs in, in art uh, supply houses of one kind or another over those years before I could start making a living. And I dare not bring in, uh, of all papers, the New York Post, which was a liberal paper at the time. It was considered a communist rag by my, not just the bosses, but my fellow workers. And you'd give yourself away if you wore a Stevenson button. You couldn't do that. This is in democratic New York. Uh, again, that showed you up as a pinko. I mean, the atmosphere was absolutely insane. Calling the house.
House Un-American Activities Committee to order, Chairman J. Parnell Thomas of New Jersey... The Hollywood film industry was the first target of anti-communist crusaders. The committee... the next witness. Uh, Mr. John Howard Lawson. It's unfortunate and tragic that I have to teach this committee the that's basic principles the of Americanism. That's not the question. Are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I believe I have the right to be confronted with any evidence which supports this question. I should like to see what you have. Oh, well, you would. Yes. Under pressure, Hollywood caved in. Anyone suspected of having communist ties was blacklisted. Films dramatizing the heroic search for the enemy within hit the screen. All right, that's swell, but I'm still a comic. For the time being, yes. We have more surprises for the Reds, but we aren't ready to show our hand. A wave of anti-communist paranoia swept the country in 1946, when news broke that Igor Guzenko, a cipher clerk at the Soviet embassy in Ottawa, had identified real Russian spies operating throughout North America. Arrests and deportations followed. Ethel Rosenberg, convicted of selling atomic secrets to the Soviet Union, became the first woman in U.S. peacetime history to be executed for espionage. Yes, there was a certain amount of fear there. Uh, I never felt it. The people I lived with never felt it. Nobody where I grew up was looking over his or her shoulder to see if the Red Menace was crawling up through Ebbets Field or something. It wasn't. Uh, but there were people who felt it, and I think media particularly. It was the last days before television took over. Uh, the media in particular, uh, the Hearst chains and a lot of the sort of right-wing conservative chains of newspapers uh, helped feed the fear. With the fear of communism running rampant, Americans felt they had to stay vigilant or risk losing the Cold War without a shot being fired. Danger! Can't you see? I'm after you! The time was ripe for a demagogue, someone who would find communists wherever and whenever he chose to look for them. You're next! You're next! You're next! Coming up on the History Channel, the Red Scare grows to a frenzy. While anti-communist feelings fuel the American psyche, stay with us here on the History Channel.